In a previous video, I mentioned that not all Arduinos are created equally. The Arduino as a platform is open source and manufacturers are allowed to substitute parts as they see fit. Most commonly, the part that varies is the serial interface chip. Most of the time it will be a CHM chip variant, but occasionally you'll have a chip that uses an FTDI variant. CHM drivers are usually installed by default on basically every platform, but FTDI drivers aren't. The driver is what allows the computer to communicate with the hardware. The primary symptom of not having a driver for the Arduino is connecting the Arduino to the computer and it not showing up on any of the programs that you try to use it with. Also, you can check the hardware that's on the board itself. If you're using an Arduino Nano, you can look underneath the board and inspect the serial chip that it uses on the bottom. If the chip has markings for FTDI, you'll need to install the FTDI drivers. Let's talk about installing the FTDI drivers on Windows and Mac. Uh, I'm not gonna cover Linux because generally Linux will have this already installed by default, but Windows and Mac usually don't. So for Windows, what you'll need to do is just go to your uh, web browser of choice and the search bar, just type in FTDI driver. And once you get your results back, you want to go to ftdchip.com, ftdichip.com, and click on the VCP drivers. So this is their website, VCP drivers, the tab for that is selected. And if you scroll down, you'll have here the Windows desktop, and over here is setup executable. Click on that. It will install a, or it will download a zip file, open that up, and just double click the uh, installer here, click extract. And then it'll have the installer show up here, next, accept, and that's it. And that's all you gotta do. And now FTDI will be recognized under Windows. So now let's go ahead and install the FTDI driver on Mac. So same as before, open up Safari. At the search bar, type in FTDI driver. And click on the first link, which should take you to ftdichip.com. Once you're here, click on VCP drivers. Scroll down a bit. And here you'll have the macOS versions that you can use. Uh, if you're not sure what version of macOS you're using, you can, of course, click on the icon in the uh, menu bar up here and go to About This Mac. And it will show you what version you're running. Chances are good you're going to be using this version right here. So go ahead and click on the uh, DMG for that. And go ahead and allow the download. Now we can close Safari. And we can click on the DMG in Downloads. So here's the installer. Before we run it though, we want to open up the system preferences. Go to Security and Privacy. And then click on the lock down here to authenticate. If you put your password in, let's go ahead and set this off to the side. We're going to need this later on. But for now, go ahead and click on the window here for the installer. Go to File, New Finder Window. And move this down over here. Click on Applications. And from here, drag and drop the FTDI installer into Applications. Now this is important, you do need to run this from the Applications folder. So what we can do now is we can double click on this installer and click Open. And now we have the installer ready to go for the FTDI driver. But when we click on this, it's going to install it up to a point and then it's going to stop saying that it needs authentication. That's why we have our security and privacy window open here, ready to go. So go ahead and click on install. Okay, and you have a window up here that says system extension has been blocked. Go ahead and click okay. And down here in the security and privacy window, we can see that it has this ready to go where uh, it's, it's blocked this installer from working. So what we need to do, since we've already authenticated, is click on Allow. And now we can see the install has succeeded. 
From here you can close the installer by clicking on the window, going up to the menu bar, clicking on its name, going to quit. And then from there you can also eject the DMG. And from here you'll have the FTDI driver installed.